Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Hadi Shahid, managing partner of Elliot Hadi Shahid, and I have my colleagues with me, the experts in the professional practice, joining today in discussing one of the most important topic which affects everyone doing business or living in the United Arab Emirates. The, <coughs> our professional firm, Elliot Hadishahid and Elliot Management Consulting are one of the pioneer professional organizations in the United Arab Emirates established in the second half of 70s and have now completed more than 45 years of professional uh, service. We are one of the qualitative companies known in our professional uh, work, sincerity to client and the quality as certified <clears throat> by international and local organizations. The most important relationship we have is with Elliot Global Alliance, a worldwide group and alliance of independent professional firms with whom we have a long standing partnerships for over 40 years. The group is spread over 92 countries with 205 members and 224 cities around the world. It is known as qualitative professional boutique around the world and works for its clients which is mostly including the family groups and as well as international firms <coughs> and organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all are aware that on 31st January, 2022, the government of United Arab Emirates has announced um, one of the major decisions in the fiscal life of a country. It joined the group of the World League by announcing the corporate tax. A corporate tax, which is also known as a business tax or sometimes called corporate income tax, will be levied on or after 30th June, 2023. With the passage of announcements in 2017, when the UAE government decided to levy value added tax from 1st January 2018, which is now the fifth year entered, it has completely changed the life and cycle and style of the business from no questions, no documentations to, to all questionable transactions in the country. So a passage has passed over four years already gone through various changes, is the high time that the government has decided that the corporate tax should also be levied. In the general experiences we have, it enhances the international investments. It gives the quality where the businesses are proven to be competitive and eventually a very business environment comes to the life of uh, the countries. So we have a number of examples <coughs> around the area and in the region where the countries have passed through a passage, which UAE is no exception. We believe that a good quality um, planning, a good quality review and doing documentation in a proper order will be more appropriate, it will enhance the opportunities and the style of businesses and the net benefits to the individuals, to the companies and to the government as a whole. A society, a rich society brings in more benefits to the all community members of the country living in that area. My colleagues, uh, the experts, uh, Dr. Kaiser Anis, a well-known in the profession uh, in the United Arab Emirates and around the region and world, 
uh, will be joining me and uh, answering a few questions we have taken from what guidelines the government has issued till now. Uh, will also be followed by Sayyid Imran Ahmed, uh, CPA, and uh, a well-known in his um, remarkable professional experience. As Samir Ahmed Shahid will also be joining me. Uh, Zahir Anis, uh, both young professionals um, with their CPA backgrounds and their backgrounds of the uh, practice in the <coughs> value-added tax and our professor Arnal Gigani, who has been known for his webinars he has been conducting on VAT, will be joining and answering a few questions. The idea of today's webinar is, although it's very early to talk about tax or corporate tax, uh, because except the initial uh, announcement and initial information, we still have to wait for a lot of information. The corporate tax law the regulations, the accounting procedures, but still we considered important that we should come on the screen, contact our clients and friends and well-wishers and inform them that what is the current situation and how they have to prepare themselves. We at Elliot UAE have a separate division on the taxation, would always be available for your questions. If we cannot answer you today, any uh, question, we will be happy to respond to you separately or have a separate meetings with one of our experts on the subject. It will be important that these matters are discussed, reviewed and sorted out before the tax authorities make any questions to, um, to the, to the uh, individual companies, which will have to face like many companies are doing in case of value-added tax. Tax is a matter of a continuous study, continuous um, interaction with the government authorities, as well as understanding of the law and the nature of business as these things keeps on changing. So please rest assured that we will update you from time to time how it goes uh, further. I'll uh, pass on some of the matters to my colleagues uh, who will join me in answering to you. Uh, Dr. Kaiser, would you tell us uh, something about the background uh, of UAE introducing the corporate tax? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adeshaid, for introducing and giving the brief history about UAE and uh, about Elliott Group, which is serving for the last more than 45 years. Uh, you all know Dr. Adeshaid is a known professional here and all over the world, and especially in Pakistan. And he's playing leading role in the profession. And I think he is the few uh, first registry of registration as an auditor in the uh, UAE government. Uh, they all seek guidance from him. And I really appreciate that uh, he organized the first, in a way, even informing to the client to get ready and get aware of this thing. Uh, the purpose, uh, this, as you rightly said, that's already five years or nearly four years over for VAT. We all was expecting that after VAT will be, it's a lot of sort of a preparation of the accounts department, everyone and the corporate tax will come. So that was the reason. And the reason of coming is because UAE has to adopt and implement the OECD BEPS two measures to address the tax challenges arising from the digitalization of the global economy and the introduction of a global minimum tax rate. That was the reason of OECD that they have to do that. And they are, uh, this is the first thing, first movement, of course, announcing that from 1st of June uh, 2023, they will do, but I think a series of uh, tax related law will come, which will 
they will be listing down all the the way of calculation of the corporate tax as you rightly said corporate tax will be on the business earning of a company so like vat if you compare vat was easy it was registered with 375000 dirham and above to be registered they have a same level but here only income from business will be taxable up to 9% it is a starting so that is uh, that is what is my uh, introduction that you should be ready for more uh, regulation to come or tax law will be coming in where they will review the whole thing like on the fixed asset rate of depreciation admissible expenses borrowing related party partners drawing management all this will come later so you all ready and i think it's great for united arab emirates to have the call we should have come long time ago and of course to add that the good thing i want to share with you that the government is reviewing the cost of operation to as low as possible like before the registration fees and everything was very high now considering they will put the corporate tax they will reduce everything in the last meeting of the chamber the director general mentioned that now chamber of commerce cost is only 50 dirham so they are good part they are looking up for reducing the uh, ex- uh, registration expenses other expenses with each license costing 50000 60000 this all will come since they are having corporate tax this is the good news we are giving to you over to dr adishan dr kaiser another point uh, is the uae the first country to introduce uh, the um, corporate tax hmm can can you repeat sir is uae is the first country in the region to <coughs> have the corporate no, no, tax no 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 you, you all know that oman has long time uh, and uh, saudi arabia has qatar has lebanon has kuwait has jordan egypt all as corporate tax but not to the 9% level so you it is a, a very uh, 9% level tax but a uh, good part is uh, that of course uh, who left bahrain left they have vat and kuwait left so they will also will follow so these are the countries already uh, having corporate tax but uh, i think income tax uh, all is having if egypt is having income tax jordan is having poor, lebanon is having all have is having so maybe after 5 years income tax something guys yeah thank you mr imran i have a point to discuss with you yes please good uh, afternoon to everybody it has been announced but when uh, you think this is going to be effective actually what has been announced that the ue corporate tax regime will become effective for financial years is starting on or after 1st june 2023 uh meaning uh, for all companies the first financial year after the 1st june 2023 the the corporate tax will be effective on them meaning if somebody uh, if some company is starting their com- uh, financial year from january to 31st december so their first uh, tax year will start from 1st january 20 4 to 31st december 20, 2024 accordingly some other companies like they have uh, companies uh, they close their accounts on 30th june so their first financial their first income of, uh, for the first tax year will start from july 2023 to 30th june 2024 similarly if some company is uh, are having the uh, the financial year ending 31st may so their financial their uh, tax period will start immediately from 1st june 23 to 31st may 2024 and i would suggest to all the companies and or i would advise that they should check their memorandum of association what is the financial year mentioned over there if it is same as per what they are uh, already following then it is fine otherwise they will have to amend their memorandum of association what they are following or they should change their financial year as per the memorandum of of association of the company and uh, that is what i would like to say here thank you imran um, uh, 
um, Professor Arnold Gigani. Would you like to add something on it? He is very young, but still with his knowledge base, is his professor. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hadi. Uh, to everyone. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Im uh, Mr. Imran here has a good point. Uh, we're in, uh, he already mentioned uh, about the uh, tax of a year. When will it become subjected to the corporate tax? Uh, the, one of the good things about uh, Mr. Imran, oh, because uh, we keep on actually uh, forgetting that uh, the financial year of each company is actually fixed under memorandum of agreement. So uh, it is very uh, wise for us to revisit those uh, memorandum, uh, memorandum of association or memorandum of understandings uh, in order to align uh, what is our financial year so that uh, it will become a, a, a very transparent on that. Thank you. Thank you. So what I understand is the tax uh, will be levied on the companies starting financial year from 1st June onwards, and whenever their financial year starts, it will be levied on them for that accounting year or financial year on which they fall from 1st June onwards, whenever the accounting year starts. Um, this is a federal tax and applicable on all the Emirates of, uh, uh, which are the part of the Federation of United Arab Emirates. Uh, Arnold, I have another point to ask you. Uh, that what is the role of the federal tax authority, which is will be the controlling authority for the taxation matters? Okay, so uh, we have seen that, of course, uh, when uh, FTA was formed, uh, we have seen this uh, in uh, in in the their responsibility. So uh, take note uh, when we mention federal tax authority. So uh, it handles uh, existing taxes, which is uh, the value added tax, excise tax, and some responsibility. Uh, we come, for example, uh, an ESR. But any other future taxes that will come in the UAE will also be handled by the FTA itself. So, uh, of course, uh, FTA will, you can see uh, the enforcement, everything will be. Uh, done on the FTAs uh, was under their, their responsibility. The same as they handled the existing taxes. Good. A question has been asked uh, within the same uh, matter that when the tax will be starting, so the, those companies who will have the accounting year end on 31st December, it will be starting for them from the financial year 1 January 2024. Correct. Yes. This is uh, the, the, the answer to a question which has been asked. Uh, uh, Arnold, similarly, there is a Ministry of Finance, which is basically the um, God organization for all the financial matters in the country. Uh, what role do you think the ministry will be playing on it? So the Ministry of Finance will remain the competent authority uh, since uh, they're after uh, that is under them control. So for the purpose of bilateral and multilateral agreements and the international exchange of information. So uh, those are the uh, other responsibility of the Minister of Finance. Okay. Um, Mr. Imran, would you like to add on something on it? Uh, no, I think it's okay because Federal Tax Authority will, will, will become the... Uh, uh, authority for to collect all the taxation and uh, taxation related matters in future also mm -hmm. corporate tax uh, in, including the corporate tax and VAT and all types of the taxes so it's fine I think Dr. Kaiser would you add something but the role of Ministry okay. of Finance uh, very important thing you know it's, it's a very important subject first of all there will be more explanation from the FTA about the uh, tax here if they say First of, uh, they start from, I don't know, they start from, it's written first of June 2023, they will start. 23, yeah. So, uh, first June 23, <coughs> after that, any income profit you are making, that is taxable. Anything you earning earlier than is not included, number one. It has to be very clear on that. Uh, they cannot say, okay, from January to June also you will pay the tax. No, the tax is starting from 1st January, 1st June 2023. The tax for everything you're earning, 
you will pay 9% on that. Now, everyone has a different, different financial year, and majority is 31st December uh, uh, is the financial year. So possibly they can change or they can change. It's up to how you prepare the return. You prepare the return accordingly. Let the consultant prepare for you, the tax consultant, accordingly. First year and afterwards, it will be synchronized similar way. But more thing, as I have read before, that uh, there are a lot of more explanation will come from the FTA, and that will be adopted. And the definition on submission of return will explain everything. Means 1st June, the 31st May 2024 will be the whole year. So when the whole year finish, then the return is due. So they may say 24, 25, 25, 26, like this, they will start talking to you. Or 23, 24. So they will explain. The more detail will more come on that account. So tax planning is most important from this forum. I'm telling on behalf, uh, as I said, uh, with all the professionals standing there, they have vast experience on tax planning. So I will request from this that everyone start planning the tax. How much you think the corporate tax uh, they can pay and many things to be seen, especially the management expenses to be looking there, related party areas to be looking there, fixed asset to be should, should be seen there, their loans where related party is using the <laughs> borrowing, they have to see because then those expenses will be not be admissible. So all this, and Elliot is expert on helping you on this account. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaiser. Uh, Samir, I have a question to you. Good uh, afternoon. Who will be the subject to the UAE corporate tax? On whom uh, this is applicable? Yes, the, uh, the UAE corporate tax will apply to all the UAE businesses and all the commercial activities also, uh, except uh, for the extraction of natural resources, uh, which will remain subject to the Emirate level corporation taxation. Thank you. Um, primarily, this is a tax on the corporate or business. So on any business activity, with the exception, what has been mentioned in the the uh, announcement and will come in detail from the tax law whenever it is issued or regulations. This is a business tax and will be applicable on persons, uh, legal entities doing the uh, corporate business in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we have who will determine the legal entity has a business that will be within the scope of UAE corporate tax. Uh, what is the authority who would be determining this. Uh, Anand, would you like to share your view on it? Okay, so uh, all activities undertaken by the legal entity will be deemed uh, business activities. So uh, what will happen is that uh, uh, all the companies here, uh, they have to revisit their activities. Uh, by the way, when we say uh, who will be subjected to UAE corporate tax, uh, we have to mention businesses and commercial activities. So take note, uh, of course, uh, all of us having uh, business licenses, uh, that is uh, one of the requirements uh, for a company to, to be subjected to a corporate tax. So licenses, when you say licenses, it actually determines the activity of each company. So uh, for those companies who are operating in the UAE, it's, uh, it's uh, very uh, prudent for us to revisit the main activities, which is approved by the authorities. Okay, so that one, uh, we have to make sure that uh, our actual revenue or actual uh, uh, our activities are actually as per our licenses, which is approved by the authority. If not, then uh, we have to make an adjustment to that. In, in, the, same, in the same line, Anil, what, who, how do you determine whether an individual has a business? within the hmm. scope of the UAE corporate. Uh... Okay, so uh, for the individual, uh, of course, uh, when we say license and permit, so those are the indicator 
that an individual or a, a, a company, given this uh, a term, is actually conducting the activity. So it's, uh, uh, it, it has to be a legal activity because uh, we're talking about the, uh, the licenses granted to you by our competent authority. So that determines the if an individual or a company having a business. What about uh, what about Mr. Anil? If somebody is having the license, trade license, but they are not operating anything, and they are just keeping the license, they are just holding the license. So, what will have the effect for that? I mean, we'll have to pay. We'll have to register those uh, uh, license or companies also where we are not uh, doing any business or it's not operational. Okay, so it is also the same way as, uh, of course. Uh, but there's a, a big difference between value added tax and a, a corporate tax. Uh, however, in this case, if a company have a license and it doesn't have, uh, of course, uh, yeah, a corporate tax is uh, actually looking at the net income. Okay, so uh, net income, if the company doesn't uh, exceed the threshold of 375, then uh, that company will, will not be subjected to the uh, the yeah, but they have to register themselves, right? Um, yes, uh, based on uh, what the registration is, so far, uh, yeah. yes. the registration is compulsory for all. Correct. Yes, because right? I've seen, yeah, later on we will dis we'll be discussing about the, uh, of course, the prison, and there's also already a requirement for them to register. And uh, and I think all companies will be required to maintain accounting sure. records, but which is compulsory, mm -hmm. even okay. even yes. for a small company like the cafeteria, like or any other company. You know, I think accounting maintenance of accounting records is compulsory, but uh, I think that audit is not it will not be compulsory. Maybe they will uh, they, they will explain they will mention later that okay if you have so much turnover then only audit is compulsory. Okay, sir. But uh, in that context, uh, uh, because of course uh, there are other, uh, for example, if we're talking about the commercial company law, they're already dictating, uh, of course, uh, those companies covered by the commercial company law, that they should have a proper audit. Uh, when we say audit, this is, uh, you know, an external audit. And also, uh, not only that uh, we have to keep our records because of the FTA is saying or the tax procedure law is dictating, of course, there's a commercial company law also dictates that, of course, we have to keep uh, proper books of accounts and maintain uh, uh, the framework as an international accounting standard. Yeah, you are so, right. Basically, uh, like in the memorandum of association of all LLC company, it is mentioned that audit is compulsory. Right. But suppose if you do not go for the audit and you are submitting <coughs> your uh, returns, so FTA might ask you that, okay, why right. you are not... Uh, going for the audit because as per the momentum of association it is mandatory so now i think uh, usually it will become... no mr emran may not fta has nothing to do uh, on that account mm -hmm. it may not uh, it, it's up to the management uh, okay. is that whether they want to because tax point of view they will prepare the accounts it's not right. necessary to even have auditor by the way not necessary yes they should prepare accounts they should submit the return accordingly. In case FTA investigated, send the investigator, investigator check it, know your income is less or more, it, or it's not as per your standard. Because anything below 375,000, of course, only have to prepare it. So there are millions of companies will be below 375,000. Yeah, but, the they, but they will have but, to prove it that they, they have they, less than 375,000 in uh, profit. They will prove it. They will prepare the accounts. No problem. They will prepare the accounts. That's fine. But it's not necessary that you will get the business of audit. You will not get the business. Okay. So, yes, they, sir. They, will all, they will all submit the return themselves. It's not necessary that um, they, he, they can submit the return. Yeah. But anything above uh, say 10 million or x million then they can have if they want to have the audit, audit but uh, yeah i don't think so they will dictate it the dictation can come only from ministry of economy that you should submit the uh, audited accounts is their thing not fta let's see how the law comes in zahir i have a uh, um, question from you since we are talking about the levy of the tax now, 
uh, how do you determine the business profits income that will be subject to the tax corporate tax yes uh, good afternoon everybody uh, thank you everyone for joining us um yes thank you for your question dr hadi i was looking at this uh, chat box and i think someone had a question along the same lines of how it's being determined uh, the business profit so the taxable income uh for it will be the accounting net profit uh so this is after making adjustments for certain items that will be uh specified in the final uh, corporate tax law and the accounting net profit as we understand is Uh, determined based on international accounting uh, ex- acceptable accounting standards so companies should be preparing uh, their uh, financial reporting according to these standards and the net profit that results from uh, this uh, accounting and financial reporting is what will determine what will be subject to the corporate tax and uh, of course in this case if a company's net profit accounting net profit is above uh has has uh, the threshold that is above 100000 us dollars 375000 uh, dirhams that portion is going to be uh, subject to the 9% not the portion that was used to meet the threshold so it is basically what is the the part of the profit that is after that 100000 US dollar uh threshold that you're meeting. Um of course there will be uh, other uh, specifications given on how people are maintaining their reporting and I expect that there will be some standardization of how companies are recognizing that profit. It cannot be that some companies are using certain standards and other companies are using others to generate a lower net profit. So there will be more clarification on this. um so this is what i would like to say regarding how a business will determine uh, the the income that will be subject to the corporate tax yeah the taxable profit will be as uh, determined uh, according to the um, financial statements made by the accounting um, standards internationally accepted accounting standards and also there is a threshold uh, mentioned in that thank you zaheer Uh, Samir, uh, what is the uh, tax rates the government has gone for? What is the threshold in the UAE corporate tax? Uh, the corporate tax rate for taxable uh, taxable income up to hundred thousand dollars will be zero percent. So, and there will be nine. It will be nine percent uh, for. Uh, the income above three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirhams, and uh, a different tax rate will be uh, there for multinationals that meet specific criteria uh, set with the reference of pillars two of the OECD base uh, erosion and profit shifting project. thank you samir as it is uh, clear now the threshold is 375000 dirhams uh, which is with the current rate equivalent to almost uh, us dollar 100000 um, zero rate um, for 375000 dollar uh, dirhams and anything above that is will be charged at 9% one of the a few questions are uh, about how would it be calculated so it will be calculated with the profit uh, if it is say 400000 so minus 375000 the uh, profit is taxable profit is 25000 and 9% will be levied on that tax which is determined after deducting 375000 but uh, uh, there maybe a few questions maybe, asking for this explanation may, may, maybe i will just add to it maybe the 375000 threshold go to million as per our discussion it can go up <laughs> above that okay now it is 375 of course uh, that is up to the government and the ministry of finance uh, as as uh, samir has mentioned uh, that there will be a different tax rates under the regime for the large multinational organizations 
uh, with pillar two of the OECD based erosion of uh, profit shifting uh, projects. Uh, if uh, Dr. Kaiser, can you uh, put some light on what are the large multinationals? Yeah, when you come to multinational, uh, multinational means uh, international companies who have all over the world office. And when they come, they always go to the Ministry of Economy, discuss their terms, the way they want to invest here. And accordingly, those things are being taken care. But uh, certainly, the, uh, in, in case of multinational, all profit earned in the territory of uh, United Arab Emirates, that will be applicable to for the tax purpose, which is 9% at, at this at present stage. It may go up after in later years. They can always revise different way. As per OECD base uh, on pillar two basis, they are doing. And of course, it is of 750 million euro is the global revenue, which is 3.15 billion. I think how many companies will come in that, that uh, slab? Um, so it's quite a huge amount and it's quite a benefit to uh, the economy of UAE. The more multinationals are coming here in, in United Arab Emirates, they will be having a quite quantum of 9% will be high. Imagine 3.15 billion uh, dirham is a very <coughs> high amount and certainly the earning will be high, the return will be high and the earning for UAE will be very in a high level. So it will be great for uh, United Arab Emirates to have as many multinational companies here. Yeah, the large multinationals uh, will find um, UAE uh, making it a global base. Uh, those who have a turnover um, for more than 750 million euro or 3.15 billion UAE dirhams, uh, it would be an attractive uh, for large multinationals. And we can see perhaps uh, many offices, even the headline of one of the newspaper today is a Swiss group is, is moving towards the UAE uh, with their global head office. So we can see good chances of uh, businesses and working in, in UAE with the attraction of the corporate tax rate. Anil, would yeah, you like to... But I, I should yes. add to it. They have to pay tax in their home country. They can't be escaped from their country tax exposure. They can shift it here, but they still they have to pay unless until they completely shift in this region. Yeah, the standards are, you know, we are doing the yeah, Unilever or the top organization they cannot mean you can't take the thing that now I'm coming to you for this business. You can't ship that way. Yeah, because now these tax tax treaties uh, uh, will will come into the picture now because all the countries they have the tax treaties yeah. signed. No, so no. then, the, so then they can take the tax benefit for that. Unless, uh, like I will tell you how how they will have uh, the tax holiday. So many things is a tax holiday for seven years, they will ask the multinational. So they have to give tax holiday or losses carry over nine years. Yeah. We have made losses for nine years, the losses will be carried nine. This has to come in. And when multinational comes in, it has a different term completely. They have to give, provide tax holiday to, for the projects. So it's com a complex situation. It, when you have a, yeah. a corporate tax. Anand, you like to um, say something on it? Uh, no, sir. Uh, all well, were uh, already mentioned uh, regarding the subject matter. Okay. Yes, okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Zaheer, uh, would you tell us if the salary income is subject to tax? Later. Yes. Uh, yeah, many, many people are asking this question. So Later. I want you to ask. Can you see in the chat that uh, there is a lot of concern and uh, regarding this, obviously, uh, UAE is an attractive place to work because of uh, the fact that there is no personal income tax. And as far as we know right now, this is uh, going to continue. And uh, so the individual salary will not be applied, corporate tax will not be applied to the individual salary and employment income, whether received from the public sector or if you're receiving from the private sector. 
Now, further to this, if an individual is making any uh, income through real estate investments, that is also, uh, and they're doing it in a personal capacity, and they're not required to have a license for, or a commercial license for this type of activity, uh, they also will not, uh, that income is not subject to the, uh, the corporate tax. It really requires this, uh, uh, if you are doing certain business activities and you have a commercial license for it, that will determine uh, you maintaining financial records. And as a result, of course, uh, if your activities are uh, fall under the categories that they have uh, uh, within the, the law, that for that, you have to report uh, your, uh, your, your income. And then, of course, appropriately, there will be a corporate tax on it. Now, it, this means that also, for the, uh, I just want to mention, uh, this is not regarding the individual, but uh, companies that even if you're not meeting the threshold doesn't mean that you are not reporting. You have to report <laughs> still to the FDA what you are earning. So it doesn't mean you are exempt from reporting your uh, your, your financial uh, records. So uh, annually. Coming back to the individual aspect, there I should also mention that any uh, income that is coming from investments, such or or uh, ownership uh, of certain shares or or uh, capital gains, uh, dividends, these uh, are that, that are done in a personal capacity. They will also not be subject to the corporate tax. So uh, your income as an individual is uh, safe. How, how about an individual who have a commercial license to carry out business uh, in the UAE? Is he yes. subject to uh, the corporate tax? As I have just mentioned, it is very clear that if you are carrying a, a, a commercial license and you are operating here, uh, this uh, business uh, here in the UAE or, uh, you know, and this is, at your normal course of business, you will, that will be subject to the corporate tax. So whether it is a freelance license or any that, that type of sort, you will also, you're doing, uh, providing a specific service or good, uh, you will be subject, you will fall under the scope of the UAE uh, corporate tax law. Thank you. Uh, I, Thank I, you I will you. add here. Yes. You know, already, me, sir, individual or the people or public, Already they are paying VAT, five percent. Okay, so there is a, they are coming in the tax ambit, or they are paying indirect tax. Second thing, on the rent agreement, municipality is charging tax, so they are paying taxes on that account. No, but those Apart are from, those are the direct taxes. We are talking huh, about indirect. corporate no, tax. No, I am saying individual. If you have, of course, these are going to be more, but I am adding that there are taxes still the individual are paying when if they live on the rent agreement, they have X percentage of tax. VAT, there is a tax. So corporate tax is coming up. Now individual tax will also, there will be all around taxes will be there. Yeah, this is the tax regime. Two things are very clear. And the taxation, corporate taxes for the whole United Arab Emirates, for anyone carrying out business activities in the UAE, irrespective of uh, where is he from, is he or she is from. Uh, there no. have been a number of questions asking on this. No, so there, I'm there, just there's a point, point where, like the professional or the companies uh, who are doing using the license, like freelance mm -hmm. license, freelance license, which they announce it. So if they're making earning, they will give tax? Yes. 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 Because it is a license. Any yeah. activity in the country which requires yes. license to be obtained for the purpose of carrying out that activity yeah. is subject to the corporate tax. So all this online... Is, this is our, our opinion. Let us see oh, how the, no, uh, the explanations all, all, come all, from the government. All online business or digital business, which is now future of the world, having registered here, will be paying the corporate tax Yes. And they will be preparing the accounts, and they'll be submitting accordingly. Exactly. This is this is what is uh, now. Let's come to a very interesting subject for the United Arab Emirates and the investments relating. Uh, Dr. Kaiser, would you uh, have some uh, points on the individuals who invest in UAE real estate? Are they subject to UAE corporate tax? Now, uh, any individual who, till now who's investing in the real estate 
and he's receiving the rent, he will not be liable to pay tax. Simple as that. Good, sir. Any individual who is investing in the uh, stock market, not liable to tax. So any income coming from outside from the investment, not liable to tax. Up till now, this is the... Right. Samir, would you add on something on this real estate or investment? Oh, thank you. Um, Imran? Uh, real estate, uh, if, you, if it is under your personal name, then you, of course you're not liable to pay any tax on the income uh, from the real estate. But if you are registered as a corporate or if it, even if it is registered under the name of offshore company, Jobs offshore company, then you are liable to pay tax on to that. Uh, uh, if, come back. What you said, if it is registered in a, a freehold license, yeah, many you know, people have done it because taking the visa, so they have to pay the tax. Yeah, if if the company is already registered in JLD free zone, and if that company own any building in the mainland, in the mainland, then they have to pay tax. No, uh, uh, no. If the company has a free zone and right. the property is owned in that free zone license, then they don't have to pay the tax. In the mainland? Yeah. If the company has in the mainland, yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they will certainly, in, in their income statement, um, amount will come there. Yeah. Okay. But uh, if it is in a free zone license, because I think many companies in Northern Emirates, they are registered in free zone. And they are Thank investing uh, in the property. Their rent is coming to their bank account. And their visa has been done there. They don't pay. Till now, with this tax law, nothing, uh, no liability. Yeah, so. yeah, it is not very uh, very much clear right now. But it is expected. It is expected it's, that if it is owned by a free zone company or an offshore company and the property is located in mainland, then you may have to pay tax. Mainland. Yeah. Thank you. Samir, uh, would you like to say something on the individual subject to the corporate uh, tax on the investment returns? Uh, yes, individual will not be, all individual will not be subject to UAE corporate tax on division, dividends, capital gains, and other incomes earned from owning shares or <coughs> other securities in their personal capacity. I think, right, they, have, I think they have excluded yes. all the income which is earned in the, in the personal name, like whether it is from the real estate or it's from shares and investment in securities and all things. But if it is in the name of the company, then I think you'll have to pay. So what you're trying to say, Mr. Imran, that everyone should take, put their things in their personal name. That's right, that's right. At least for the next few years. At least for the next few years. Look like that. <laughs> Zahir, would you like to explain? We are running short of uh, time now since we have to wrap up at, at 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll take up some questions as well. Uh, can you explain a little more about the uh, income earned by the freelance professionals? Uh, Zahir? Can you unmute? Uh, sorry about it. Uh, uh, as you know, we have been discussing, I think it's becoming clear to everyone, uh, the income uh, earned from activities carried out under a freelance license, that would uh, also uh, be subject to the corporate tax. Of course, that will be the, based on the net income. If their net income, uh, uh, that the net income that is above $100,000, uh, US dollars, or 375000 uh, the runs, that part, portion will uh, be uh, taxed at 9%. And so, yes, it is coming under uh, the corporate tax law. Now, I, I, as we are discussing over here, many of these rules and um, uh, how things are being going to be calculated and what is being recognized will be given in the final uh, tax law. Uh, if you are a freelance professional, you're providing uh, a service, you're providing or providing some goods or whatever it might be, you, you have to maintain your financial records. And accordingly, based on that uh, record keeping, you will be reporting your 
um, uh, your, your earnings. And if your earnings are above, uh, whatever earnings you have, net profit earnings you have above 100,000, you have to pay a 9% corporate tax on this. So uh, this, uh, uh, um, uh, the, although Dr. Kessel has alluded to this, uh, there's a possibility that this threshold may, may be uh, raised uh, further. So those who are operating maybe a smaller uh, set of uh, smaller business uh, as a freelance may not have to uh, worry about it. But uh, yes, uh, this is something that uh, those with freelance licenses uh, must uh, consider because you are uh, and considered as a single entity uh, providing goods and services within uh, the country. Thank you, um, uh, Zaheer, um, for participating in this. A discussion with the, uh, will be on the income earned by an individual from bank deposits. Would it be subject to corporate? Imran, would you like to? Yeah, I think as, as we have already talked earlier, yeah, a interest and other income earned by an individual from bank deposit or saving schemes will not be subject to the UE corporate tax because it is uh, in the name of the individuals. So it is very clear. And uh, there's no withholding also on the dividend no, no. or interest. There's no withholding. Not yet announced for uh, withholding tax or the advance tax or like that. Uh, the law has not mentioned any such words. So what are you saying that the um, interest and other income earned by individuals from the bank deposits or savings from the bank not, deposits yeah will not be subject to UACT. Yeah, this also clarifies the point uh, that it is the bank deposit and not other uh, financial uh, interest people take by individual loans or uh, loans by the um, between the corporate authorities. The as, law, as, yeah. as it long is very clear that it is only talking about the saving schemes as well as the bank interest. That's right. That's right. As long as the investment is made in, under the personal name, then it's fine. If it is in the name of the company, then maybe you'll have to take it into your accounts, into your company accounts. Thanks, Anil. Any exemptions? Anyone have an exemption? Uh, anyone has an exemption? Yes. Uh, yes. So far, uh, we have seen already an exemption. Uh, wherein the business engaged in the extraction of natural resources. This uh, will be considered as an exempt. So actually it will be taken up uh, in a different uh, uh, Emirates level corporate uh, taxation. Okay. So far, uh, this is uh, one of the things that uh, we have seen under the exemption categories. Although, uh, of course, uh, as uh, Mr. Zaire has mentioned, as a uh, uh, they will be publishing the laws and regulation when it comes to the corporate tax. So we'll come to know uh, what are those the, the other items that will be considered exempt and outside scope. I think um, the welfare organization will be exempted on that. Maybe they will announce in the tax law for yeah. all those welfare organizations or non-profit organizations. <clears throat> but let's it will see. come. Uh, let's see how the time... Uh comes on to that. Anil, also income be exempt from, any income will be exempt from the UAE corporate tax? Uh, yes, uh, as uh, Mr. Zaria has mentioned, uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Zaria has mentioned all those passive income uh, will be considered as uh, as uh, not part, uh, uh, wherein uh, you don't have to include it in the corporate tax. I have a question. What is the benefit derived by these companies out of this uh, corporate tax? Sorry, what's your question? What Dr. is the Kaiser? benefit companies will derive because of this corporate tax, which they will pay? I think today, today we are answering others. Uh, we will answer. Yes. No, no, I'm asking. <laughs> what is the benefit? I've seen that question already in the, uh, in the same. Is, I have a question. Same on VAT. <laughs> they have. Uh, five percent. So, what is the benefit the community got it in sustainability you, you, or anything? You the would government be should come up in, in detail that they, we have done such and such things. You would be asking this question from Ministry of Finance, not no, from BAD. No, no. I, I'm I, just saying that they should yeah. come up. Let's, let's this move on. This has been I spent. Have, this has been collected and this has been like a budget. 
you have to show your budget then simple as that we have uh, imran uh, what is qualifying shareholders because the exemption is from the qualifying shareholders uh, investments and capital yes, gains uh, they have used this word uh, qualifying shareholder exactly a uh, yeah a qualifying shareholder refer to an ownership interest in a ue or foreign company that meets certain conditions to be specified in the ue corporate law that those conditions they have not specified yet so uh, so that is what is uh, mentioned but it is not yet clear okay one more point in this is that income earned by the foreign investors would it be subject to the ue tax and uh, will a foreign company or individual be subject to the ue tax so basically foreign entities and individuals will subject to ue corporate tax only if they conduct a trade or business in the ue in an ongoing or regular manner that is what the, uh, the law has used these wordings and uh, we are waiting for some clarification on on to that yeah one of the major uh, question which i have been receiving uh, from large number of uh, participants is mm-hmm. about the free zones of course free zones play okay. a major role in the economic development and the business carried out within the united arab emirates there are more than 30 uh, free zones uh, perhaps in each emirate there are free zones um, quite uh, from the financial free zones to the industrial free zones uh imran um, yes uh, what is your intake of the actually, announcement free zone is very hot now? is very hot subject these days free zone actually free zone businesses will be subject to ue corporate tax i repeat free zone businesses will be subject to ue corporate tax but the ue corporate tax regime will continue to honor the corporate tax incentives currently being offered to free zone businesses that comply <laughs> with all regulatory requirements and that do not conduct business with mainland ue that means you if you are uh, uh, following the conditions which will be which will be specified later on maybe that okay if you do not conduct business with the mainland ue then you are not required uh, to pay corporate uh, tax but all companies which are registered in the free zones in any of the free zones they are required to register with fta and they are required to file return annually as per okay. their, uh, as per their financial year end so accordingly in the fun- for the free zones there are three types of the businesses which are being conducted these days like first is the scenario first scenario is that the uh, companies they are importing the goods safe from china they are keeping the goods in the in their warehouse which is located inside the free zone and they are re exporting it i think that is totally exempted or uh, like that the second scenario is that they are importing the goods and they are keeping in their warehouse and they are selling within the free zones and those goods are consumed within the free zones we have to wait and see that what will be the treatment for that third scenario is that they uh, the free zone companies they are selling their products to the mainland companies so we are expecting that uh, that will attract the corporate tax and the companies will be required to maintain separate details for sales in their books of account that how much what is the quantity what is the sale for the mainland what is their we export sales and what are the goods which they have consumed or the other people they are consuming those goods within the free zones and uh, we are waiting for for the clarification some more information from the authorities and right now this is the thing apart from this that uh, all the free zone companies uh, they have the tax holiday period starting from 15 years to uh, 50 years uh, for each free zone they have a different tax holiday period so they have to follow uh, the, and the, uh, the authorities will honor those uh, incentives as long as the you uh, free zone companies meet the certain conditions certain conditions will come little later but what i have explained that there are three type three uh, types of the businesses which are being conducted in the free zone areas so we have to wait and see thank you imran uh, you treatment of the companies or businesses operated uh, through the uh, free zones will be a very 
uh, important and hard subject to um, give an explanation and yeah, go on. But the, but the important people. point here is that all company, free zone companies will be required to register with FTA and they are required to file the return. Right. So it is very clear that all uh, corporate bodies, anyone who is carrying out any business in the United Arab Emirates, uh, at mainland or free zones, whether in the, as a freelancer or as a branch of a foreign company or as any other entity registered or required license for the purposes will be required to submit, register uh, for the corporate tax and submit its returns. So, when you uh, mean to say, uh, Mr. Imran, when you mean to say return, what is return? What you will write to them? What they will have, they, it, it will be like this, uh, they will have the treatment like just zero rated. No, how? They will write all the income, expenditure, or like this? How Something like do? that. Uh, uh, we don't have any idea right now, but so, they will have to submit the return. It looks like that he has to submit the return and not to pay tax. So he will not prepare the pay. return. Yeah. Complete that I have so much income, so much expenses, I have billion exactly. profit, but I will not pay the tax. Exactly. Like this currently for the VAT, for the zero rated people, the companies are submitting the returns. Like, the, like the tax holidays. Uh, tax holidays. Uh, so we, we will move it, it, on. Uh, I know I have to skip many points uh, because of the time. Uh, I want to cover up the major uh, point now to see that what are we expecting in months to come. The tax uh, announcement is from 1 June 2023, and the announcement came on 31st January 2022. Uh, what each company should be doing to prepare itself, and what are we expecting the announcements in the uh, time to come? I like to uh, Arnold to start on this point, and every one of us to participate on uh, this subject. Yes, Arnold. Uh, okay. So uh, what we're expecting is that uh, um, the regulation will be coming out soon. Uh, of course, uh, by, uh, I have read some of the uh, question coming from the chat box. Uh, uh, some of them uh, cannot be answered currently because we are actually waiting for the, uh, uh, for the incoming uh, regulation or publication coming from the authority. So that is, uh, we'll be seeing that in the next uh, few months to come. And of course, the education, uh, uh, information dissemination coming from the FDA also, those are the must to watch. Uh, also, uh, it is uh, prudent for us, uh, of course, uh, review uh, all our contracts, uh, compliance with the international accounting standard, books of accounts. We know that uh, you are already you're keeping the books of accounts, you're maintaining books of uh, uh, records. That is good for value added tax. However, when it comes to the income tax, this one is a totally different one. So uh, it is also prudent that you start early by actually conducting an impact analysis uh, uh, for your, uh, uh, your, yes, uh, your businesses, dealings, uh, and uh, of course, uh, those are the, the most important things yeah, that I will, I will be saying. And of course, uh, for those who are here, uh, we will be conducting a regular webinar on value added tax and, of course, the corporate tax. So be with us uh, until uh, we are announcing those things again. Thank you. I would like to add into this that, uh, okay, everybody should review their uh, company legal documents carefully and read it carefully, especially as I have mentioned earlier that uh, financial year also should be as per your memorandum of association. If it is not as per your memorandum of association, then you go and amend that one. Plus you have to uh, look into the sponsorship agreement, management agreement, your expenditures, personal expenditures you have to review. You have to you have to review your current accounting software whether it is capable of uh, doing the corporate tax uh, uh, things and other things. You have to look into the legal structure yourself that whether it is uh, going to work out in future or no. You have to see your organization structure also whether the current accountant or current finance manager is capable of. Uh, 
taking this much pressure in future and he's capable of doing the accounting things we you have to review each and everything and then make an assessment and and this you have to go ahead with that thank you very much thank you imran uh, yes. would you like to add on something Yes, um, just to uh, all the points just mentioned uh, are very important with respect to uh, making sure that the financial reporting function is doing correctly and accurately. You have the right team in place. Legal structure is absolutely very important. Everybody should be looking at uh, their uh, legal structure as the foundation of, how, of their company's operations. Also, the activities that are within their business license, they must make sure that all their activities are registered uh, clearly. Uh, I think this, um, the fact that we're now going to have a corporate tax coming in will require everyone to very closely look at their operations and make sure it is coming into alignment with respect to the tax reporting and the laws that will be uh, prevailing with respect to doing business activity in the UAE. This is um, uh, the VAT was, uh, let's say, uh, a moment where folks did start uh, taking up this project. But I think with the corporate tax now, we will have uh, increased focus, uh, increased requirement to look at your financial reporting function, to be look at your, your business licensing structure and legal structures. Also, with respect to your tax planning, it is now important for you to have the, the, uh, an advisor or a consultant working with you to do the tax planning. So you're knowing what you're, uh, project, you're projecting to be paying for the upcoming years to make sure that you are also uh, uh, in compliance with the law. So these things should all be uh, of uh, concern uh, to uh, administrators, managers, and owners. Uh, more information will be coming as uh, time progresses, but I think if this, uh, you know, seeing all these folks who are here today with us, you can show that everyone has uh, interest in, uh, in, 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 in getting ahead of this. And I would highly advise everyone to stay close to your advisors and consultants and uh, accountants to make sure, uh, and uh, firms like ours, to make sure that you are properly prepared for, the, uh, for, next, uh, for next year when this starts to take into effect. Because as if we recall, the time when VAT came around, it was quite a bit of chaos uh, uh, as we approached 1st of January 20, 2018. Many companies were left caught out unprepared. So let us not uh, for, uh, have, uh, let, let us plan for a much more smoother transition when this new uh, corporate tax uh, comes, into, uh, comes into place. Thank you. I mean, your point of view? Uh, my point of view is that there is uh, introduction of corporate taxation is another uh, uh, time where all companies needs to get prepared. Most of the points have been uh, <clears throat> given in by all my colleagues. Uh, the only thing is to all companies should uh, get their uh, tax planning done in a proper way uh, and uh, in order to run smoothly. So accordingly, then uh, a smooth business transition and practice of corporate tax can be introduced into their businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. And undoubtedly, government has given ample time for everyone to uh, plan things in an orderly manner. The regulation, the law, the details will come in due course of time, like it happened in the introduction of VAT. There have been a number of... Uh, uh, seminars. Uh, in those days, there was no uh, COVID, so there were physical seminars uh, were conducted by the government authorities themselves, uh, and we had a good period of explanation. Earlier, um, Hadi Shahid and Alien Management Consulting are available to have um, answer any questions. I We have received a number of questions since we are running short of time. Uh, our office will respond to everyone individually. But the general questions were the similar, which have by and large been covered by our presentation. I thank all the uh, participants uh, from the um, UAE and from outside. And thanks to my panelists and colleagues uh, who have joined me in today's uh, discussions. We will have a regular discussions on the taxation and our panel of experts will continue working on this subject. Thank you very much for your
joining us today and uh, all the best. Goodbye.